Welcome to another glorious Hubitech tutorial video, this time featuring the granddaddy automation app of them all, Rule Machine. The Rule Machine app has almost unlimited automation capabilities. With it, you can create rules that behave differently based on whatever conditions you set. Plus, Rule Machine allows you to build rules with more complex devices and complex actions that other apps just can't handle. That said, as it goes, with great power comes great opportunity to make a mess of things. You probably didn't learn how to drive your car in your dad's Ferrari. And likewise, if you're new to Habitat, stay with the Basic Rules app or some of our other friendlier apps to start. Heck, even the guy who wrote Rule Machine uses Basic Rules app for most of his automations. But sometimes, you've just got to have that extra power. So let's see what Rule Machine is all about. An automation in Rule Machine has two required parts, a trigger event and actions to run. The trigger event is what kicks off the rule, if you will. An event can be a motion sensor senses motion, a door with a contact sensor opening, a specific time, a mode change. Almost any message a device sends to the hub can be used as a trigger event. Now you can also add multiple trigger events to a rule, so if for example you want the light to turn on when a motion sensor senses motion, or when a door opens, those are two trigger events, you can do that. Now when the trigger event happens, the hub executes the actions to run. Actions to run are essentially all of the things you want your hub to tell your devices to do. It could be turn on a light, send a message, adjust the thermostat, play music, whatever. You can have multiple actions and these actions can be layered with conditions, delays, repeats, and other nuances. We will get to these advanced features later on in our Rule Machine series, but let's keep it simple right now and learn the basics first so your head doesn't explode. So let's open up Rule Machine and see what it's all about. If you haven't already loaded it, you can find Rule Machine by selecting Add Built-in App, then selecting Rule Machine. Select Create New Rule, then give it a name and hit Continue. So here's our Rule Machine homepage. There are several things on this page you don't need to worry about right now or possibly ever. Today we're just focusing on trigger events and actions to run. So let's build a fairly basic common automation to show you how this all comes together. For our rule, let's use a living room that has a motion sensor and a light. Our automation in the familiar when this happens, do that format would be when motion starts in the living room, turn on the living room lights, then wait for motion to stop and stay stopped for eight minutes, then turn off the lights. In Rule Machine, the when part of the automation is the trigger event. Everything else is part of our actions to run. When we are done with this rule, it is gonna look like this. Now let's show you how we got there. We'll start by selecting our trigger events. Based on the devices you have in your system, you'll have a variety of capabilities to choose from for your trigger events. We are using motion sensors for our trigger, so the capability is motion, and we'll select our living room motion sensor here. We want the rule to trigger when motion reports as active. We also have the choice for the rule to trigger immediately when motion is detected, or we can wait until motion stays active for a certain amount of time. We want it to trigger right away, and we are done with our trigger event. Here we could add more trigger events or edit the ones we have, but we are done with trigger events. So our trigger events are set. Let's tell it what to do when the rule triggers by selecting our actions to run right here. We'll select our first action by hitting this plus sign right here. There are a ton of different actions and action types you can create in Rule Machine. Some are common, some you'll probably never use, but there are some very unique things you can do with Rule Machine once you get your bearings. For our rule, our first action is to turn on a light. So we'll select control switches, push buttons for our type. Our action is to turn switches on off. And then we just need to select our living room light. Make sure this is toggled so on is bold. You can ignore everything else and we are done with our first action. As you build out your actions, they will fill into this table here. Once we get a few more actions added, I'll show you how these icons can be used to edit your actions. But now let's move on and create another action with the plus sign. This action is to wait until motion stops. Now my wife would definitely not agree that waiting and doing nothing is an action, but in Rule Machine, waiting is indeed an action. So select delay, wait, exit, or comment as the type. You'll see there are two types of waits. We want to wait for events. Wait for expression is used when you want to wait until a condition or set of conditions is true to move on to the next step of the rule. Now we'll be introducing conditions in part two of this series, so get pumped for that. But now select wait for events. Our capability is again motion. We'll select our living room motion sensor. This time we want it to report when it is inactive. 
We also want it to delay turning off until motion has been inactive for 8 minutes. So we'll toggle this and stay right here and then set it for 8 minutes. Then we'll hit done with this wait event. Here we have the option to select another wait event. For example, we could select a button and then it will wait for motion to stay inactive for 8 minutes or for the button to be pressed. But we're going to keep it simple and hit done with wait events. So now we need something to happen after the wait event occurs and that is to turn the light off. So again we'll create a new action. The type is control switches. We want to turn switches on off, select our light, then toggle this off and hit done with action. So these are all of the actions for this rule. If you want to make edits to your actions, you can do so using these icons. The arrows move your actions up and down the table. Actions are executed in order top to bottom, so order is important. If you press the plus sign, you can add an action above the current line. So I'll just do that quick. Let's just add another light to turn on like so. And see, there it is, added right above that line. So this checkbox here allows us to disable an action. That can come in handy if you are doing some trial and error with a rule and you want to test with different actions to see what works best. Or if we know we don't want an action, we can delete it with the trash can. If you have a really long rule and you don't want to use the arrows, you can cut a rule with scissors. Then when you press one of these clipboards, it will insert it in the line above. Finally, with these checkboxes on the left, you can select an action or actions to copy. Sometimes it'll be creating a rule with conditions and small variations between the actions. With this, you can copy the ones you want, click here to copy those actions onto the clipboard, then click this clipboard to paste them at the end of the rule, or any of the other clipboards if you want them pasted on a line above. We'll show this in a later video. Of course, for any action, you can click on that action to go in and edit it. But for this rule, we just want three actions, so I'll delete everything else and hit done with actions. So here is our finished rule. When we are satisfied with its excellence, we can make it active by hitting install rule. When the rule is installed, we can test it by hitting run actions. We can pause the rule, which freezes the actions and prevents trigger events from firing, or stop it, which prevents trigger events and essentially resets the rule when you start it again. If you make changes to a rule, hit update rule to make the changes active. Now you may be looking at this rule and thinking, well that's great, but I don't want my lights turning on when I walk in the living room in the middle of the day. Well my friend, it sounds like you are trying to add a condition to this rule. And I got great news for you, conditional rules are the subject of part two. So try out some basic automations in Rule Machine first, get the hang of the flow of trigger events and actions to run, and when you're ready to party, I'll see you in part two. Thanks for watching, and thanks for elevating your environment with Hubitat Elevation.